to Waterlens, stories from the world race. This next story takes place in Siem Reap, Cambodia. So members of N-Squad were given the exciting opportunity to church plant in Siem Reap in partnership with local pastor and computer teacher named Philip. His name was Tin. The thing that stood out the most to me was his smile. We asked him if he knew about Christianity or Jesus. Asked him if he had any questions and he said yes but he couldn't articulate in English, you know, what those were. But we were like, hey, are you gonna be here on Tuesday? Like, we're gonna be back out. We can bring someone who can translate. So he set, set the time, 1 p.m. on Tuesday, right there. And he's like, okay, I'll be there. Tan wanted to learn more about Jesus. And so we invited Pastor Philip, a man we met, to come alongside us the next day so that they would be able to communicate and we could share the gospel with him. It's a good opportunity for, to work with them. Church planting is really important for God's kingdom because uh, many people can come to the Lord and accept Jesus and to be saved in eternal life with Jesus. We wanted to bring Philip out just because he had more specific questions that we weren't able to communicate. Um, that he wasn't able to articulate in English. We planned a meeting for today. We brought along our friend, Pastor Philip, to, to translate and speak Khmer. Yeah. Our set meeting time is about five minutes away. So we prayed as we walked over and we're expecting that he'll be here. We're at our arranged time, but there is no tin. So we were a little discouraged. We bought him a Coke, we just sat there. And then it gets one o'clock and we're like, okay, he should be here like any minute. Like we were really excited. And, um, and then it's like 110, 115, 120. And it was like getting a little antsy. And so he started praying, um, just being expectant that he would show up. Yeah. It was right before 130, maybe like 127. A bike rolls up and turns around, his face lit up, of course, with his smile. Huge, radiant smile on his face. Got him and Pastor Philip introdu introduced to each other and they just started chatting and just already seemed so comfortable. Pastor Philip just started telling him about who Jesus was and all of us kind of took turns sharing different parts of our story. Yeah, and it's always exciting to share it with people, don't get me wrong, um, but when someone like, you can tell that they want to hear it and they want to, to know what this is, makes it more exciting. It wasn't artificial at all in Tin, like for Tin. Like he was so genuine in like wanting to know more and understand and to just see like what it was that we have that, that was so I guess evident or contagious that he wanted also. Um, and the Holy Spirit brought me comfort to my heart. I felt like the Lord telling me to tell him about the Holy Spirit. He invites us into a new life with the Holy Spirit. Paige just shared a little bit about her story um, and the Holy Spirit and we're like, you can have that too, like do you want it? And he said, yes, <laughs> very excited, very much. All we have to do is pray and ask God and His Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. Okay. And he was like, yeah, yeah, like very, very excitedly and enthusiastically and Pastor Philip like looked at us and he was like, he said yes, yes, and so we're all just like yes, um, which was oh, it was just really beautiful because there's always that chance that the person will say no, even after being so engaged and interested. And all of us prayed together for him that he would receive the Holy Spirit and that he would have the strength to live as a Christian in a Buddhist family. And so he talked with Pastor Philip afterwards about receiving a Bible and being discipled by him. I pray for him to be growing with God. And I also hope that God has planned for him and his family. His face, his smile was so much brighter after accepting the Lord. And it was just like really cool to see the change of like how bright it was before and then how much brighter it was after because of what's inside of them. You will bless her. Yes. Good luck for you. Yes, you too. And he is also happy when he decides to believe Jesus because he also knows that God is control him. And he also knows that the Lord is be with him all the time. Jeff had not been feeling well, which we really were sad about because he had really um, 
just kind of cultivated this this friendship. And so when we came back, we were like, I hope he's awake, we want to tell, like we were so excited. And we go up and he's sitting out on the balcony. And so we like kind of creep up behind him and wait till he like knows we're there, turns around and we're like, let's go baby. Let's go baby. <laughs> <laughs> We declared that earlier today. We did. We have exciting news for you. Yeah, the you most know. exciting news. Bring the whole town to Christ. He brought. He brought one person to Christ. Let's go, baby! Yay! Yay! And so it was really exciting to see someone so close and so eager, and you could tell that he was so genuine and ready to receive the love of Christ. At training camp, they talk about this bridge of evangelism, and so. One person starts here, and if coming to faith is on this side, each step in evangelism is like laying a plank on this bridge. So it was really cool to be a part of laying that one of the last planks on that bridge, and then ultimately having the girls follow up and like be a part of completing that bridge and him giving his life to the Lord. What I think of is like planting a seed, and you never know, like, because it takes time for a seed to grow and to um, become ripe for harvest and. So you never know like what part of the, the stage of that that we are gonna be at as we share with people. We just happened to cross paths with this man in the time of harvest and the Lord was able to let us be a part of his work that's been going on in his life for we don't even know um, how long, but we <laughs> got to be there for that, which is insane. This brings us to the end of our Waterland series. This is just a few stories of world racers being the church, loving people in all circumstances, and bringing the kingdom of God. There are world racers doing this all over the world right now. If you want to hear more of their stories, you can go to worldrace.org. But more importantly, if you are feeling this stirring welling up inside of you, this need to start your own mission journey, and if you see now more than ever that God can use ordinary people and that he can use you to build his kingdom, then go and check out our roots and start your mission journey today. Thanks for watching.